Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me today for my first talk ever here at conference. <laughs> thank you very much. Few people couldn't be here today, which are my parents, so let me say hi to them to live stream because they are watching. Ciao mami, ciao oci! To ma prva prednáška. Also, my parents can't speak English, so please, once upon a time you can laugh just for nothing, so they are proud, so I'm doing a good job. <laughs> so, who am I? My name is Andrea Fickova, and I work as an Agile practitioner at Red Hat. And in Agile, I have about two years of experience before I gained two years of experience in development. And just a few months ago, I finished my master's degree study on Masaryk University, also here in Brno. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and as you noticed, I migrated from this faculty to another one. That's what people usually do when they are studying here. I work as an agile practitioner with hybrid, but also with remote teams. For cl clarification, hybrid team is a team where part of the team members are co-located at least in one city, but another part works, works spread it around the world. And today, I want to show you how I engage these people so they make close relationships, because in working environment which is spread it, it's not that easy. However, it brings a lot of advantage, advantages we already well known, right? So for employer, he can get various people with a lot of expertise and talent from all around the globe. But for employee, it means that you can get more job opportunities and much, much more flexibility. And when you are not seeing each other, it brings also disadvantages. First one is lack of trust. It is important because when you want to say you made a mistake at work, it's okay to say, hey Fernando, I made a mistake, can you, can, can you help me? Thank you, I knew that because he's a good guy. <laughs> if I wouldn't have trust in Fernando, I wouldn't ask him for help and then I wouldn't be able to solve my issue. Feeling of loneliness. Maybe someone, people of you are working with your teams in office, but some of you can be like too far away from others, working from home, really lonely, and that it's not also psychologically safe, and I believe you want to keep your teammates happy. And overall, there might happen in effective communication, because when you're meeting each other face to face, you are able to break boundaries much easier. There are also some cultural differences and then you can, uh, you know how to speak with each other. With face-to-face -face team or team which is co-located and they're meeting each other on daily basis in the office, it's easier because they can go together for a coffee, grab a lunch together or play some game that is available in the office, for example, billiard or maybe VR. So what is the solution to connect these people when they are not working together? You can bring these activities to online environment. And ideas for that are to schedule virtual coffees, to schedule virtual team building slash fun activities, to do office day, which is unfortunately only for hybrid teams I was mentioning, and you can engage your team asynchronously. Virtual coffee is event with which you want to simulate situation when you ask your colleague to grab a coffee with you. At this meeting, you can chit chat completely about anything you want, but you can also help yourself and set the topic here. You can do, the, do this by asking a question. For example, what was the most ridiculous conspiracy theory you ever heard? Or you can do picture sharing with some particular topic, for example, your picture from teenage, your picture as you were a baby, or anything else. Believe me, when you do this on a meeting, you will have a lot of topics to talk about, and you can spend one whole hour at least talking about anything. Much more things you can do when you are doing fun activities. 
you can do quizzes, you can do quick online games, or other online games I would like to introduce you at least briefly. Quizzes. Who does not like them, right? <laughs> First idea, oh, no, quizzes. So, in general, you need a facilitator. Unfortunately, that person won't be an active player, but still can have a lot of fun. And there you might, you might create a uh, lot of rules, like mm, taking care of um, ranking system. You can get plus point or plus 100 point, whatever you like. You can play these games in teams. So within your team, you can create two or three small teams, or you can play it on individual, individually. And don't forget to keep the time for questions. You don't want your fellas to think about one question for 10 minutes, right? First idea of quiz is quiz about teammates. For this quiz, you need to collect data about your teammates. I used for that Google Forms, and there I asked various questions like, what's your favorite sport? What was your first job? What's your hobby? And I also leave their space for letting them write any random facts they would like to share about themselves. Then I prepared questions with another option. So I had to make up option B or C. After that, I noticed that some questions are really frequently answered. So I created categories so we have much more fun. But before we really dived into game, I let my fellas to review and approve their questions about them so they feel safe of what they are sharing. And they helped me to make quiz more tricky, which is what you really want. So for game intro, I showed the rules. Then I created a table with names and categories and score table because we need a winner, right? And the game looked like this. I chose Angie's for a job for 200 points. Then it got you to another slide. It was made in Google uh, Slides. And then you could see the question. And I wanted my team to have TV show experience. So I made a lot of transitions. And all the options were like flying from left side, like A, junior QE, B, makeup artist, or C, graphic designer. My lessons learned after this were that at first I could do, I could have done uh, categories and then figure out questions, but I got an uh, idea of categories too late. Another idea is to do not quiz about your teammates, but some general overview key, quiz or pub quiz. For this, you can choose random questions from various categories like sport, music, history. And I can advise you to take a look on Mentimeter.com, but ChatGPT will help you as well. And for example, it can be question like, Queen guitarist Brian May is an also expert in what scientific field? Who would like to answer? Yeah, Nico? Astrophysics. Correct. It's astrophysics. Good job. Then you can do quiz about gassing the place. So you need to collect uh, pictures or various places. Don't make it too random. So if you live in small village and you will take a picture of random street, it won't work. But if you also take a picture of Eiffel Tower, everyone knows that it's in Paris, correct? So you don't want to make it too easy. And another question. What is there in the right corner? What's the place there? Who would like to guess? Italy. Italy. Yeah. Great. I don't know. I will take up. I will take a look later. <laughs> uh, to do these activities, you need a lot of time. Especially quiz about teammates were super time consuming, but I don't regret any second or minute doing that. And my friends, uh, yeah, my teammates are my friends. They had a lot of fun. They were engaged. And making them happy is just everything for me. But if you don't want to spend that much time doing these quizzes, 
you can play quick online games. Examples are Scrabble or Gartic Phone. It's more maybe for artists and, you know, because you have to draw with mouse there. Scrabble IO is really simple. One of your teammates gets three options and chooses one word which they will draw there. And on the right side from the picture, there is a chat where you can write your guess. And when you write it, when it's correct, you get points. And the game ends whether when everyone uh, guess, guesses a correct answer or until your time runs up. And another, and my very favorite, which I'm too biased for that, I guess, is uh, Gartic Phone. You are drive, uh, driving that again with your mouse. And let's say you play in a team of five people, and everyone writes some ridiculous, really ridiculous sentence. For example, giraffe on the moon is placing you as a flag. It can be also something else, an elephant eating a burger. You have five sentences like this, and they are reshuffled among your team members. So you can get drawing like this. Then you have five drawings that are reshuffled again to another people and they are guessing again. So in this case, elef they kind of got it that elephant is eating a burger. And it repeats, so then you are drawing again what you see. And the last person <laughs> writes <laughs> what it is. Gartic Phone is a great game. There are multiple playing modes. You can play with time, you can make it faster. Making it faster is even more fun uh, and also, uh, you know, yeah, engaging. Other activities I can recommend to you are online games we all know, like CSGO or Among Us. They are whether for free or they are very cheap. And then two other possibilities. For this, you don't need any online tool only Google Meet or any other video conference you are using with your fellas. And the first fun game is about taking picture of inside of your fridge and showing it to others. There is one facilitator who collects those pictures and shows to everyone. Do it spontaneously. You don't want people to cheat and put their all healthy stuff. <laughs> and endless possibilities. Everyone of you in your team will show one random thing from your household. For example, this. Does anyone know who is this? Makeup. Yeah, I heard makeup. It's eyeshadow palette I use for myself. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Office day. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's for a uh, hybrid team. So when you have a few members who are working, let's say, from Brno, but they are not visiting office, they are working on, on, in home, um, you can schedule one day, let's say one day in a week, when all of you will meet, and you can do activities like coffees, etc., and you can combine it with activities like Gartic phone, and when you have team members who are from other part of the world, you can connect with them. I believe every one of us has equipment uh, in the offices for that. For asynchronous engagement, you don't need much, again, just some text communication channel, and I believe everyone has that because you just need to type with your fellas. And there you can do, for example, some thread. In our team, we have a Monday thread, and in this thread, we are sharing random personal pictures, for example, from our weekend. Um, and we are sharing there what we've done. And, or even it can be a picture like from last Wednesday, right? And then you can know something more about your uh, friends. Then you can ask a question. If you remember, as I was talking about virtual coffee and setting the topic, you can do the same there as well. So you can ask here, again, question about most ridiculous conspiracy theory and let people to write it. And for all of this I mentioned before, you can use chit chat channel where you will talk about non-work -rela non related topics, share memes. If you find some super article and you want to show it to everyone, you can. 
It has, however, one disadvantage, and it's spontaneity. What does it mean? When I'm in the office and I come to my friend, hey, Irka, do you want to go for a coffee with me? Sure. Thanks, let's go. <laughs> so it's not scheduled. It's really in random time, in random day. And that is missing because you have to kind of schedule everything when you're doing it online. But it has still multiple benefits because your, your team is bonded, communication gets better, problem solving gets better, overall cooperation, when boundaries are broken, they, it's better. And best practices I would like to share is if you are, let's say, a manager, be sure that you have time capacity for these activities. Don't overload your team too much so they can have at least one hour in a week to do at least virtual coffee. Be careful about time zones, so don't schedule virtual coffee for 10 a.m. Central European time because you don't want your teammates to wake up at 4 in USA. But you can ask them if they want it, if of course, like, <laughs> you know. Ask your team what they want and let them vote for that. In my case, I did, again, Google form, and I asked if they want virtual coffee, virtual team building, office day, etc., etc. I asked for date, and I asked for time, and I scheduled the most perfect time for them. You can find organizer. It can be you, or it can be other volunteer, specifically for fun activities, each time it can be someone else from your team. Someone's Lucy will create activity, then Kasha will create activity, etc., etc. You can do fun activities when you are having virtual coffee. It can save you time. So sometimes on, during virtual coffee, we are asking questions, sharing pictures, or we are playing Arctic phone. And last but not least, don't make it mandatory. This is opportunity for your team to become closer and you don't want to force them. Also, someone can be more introverted and does not like talking too much with people and interact that much. And it's okay. So pick up at least one activity I showed you. Try it. You can make changes after some feedback you get from your team and try it again until your team is perfectly happy. And now tell me, are you, are you doing anything from this already with your team? Or what are you taking with yourself from today? I already do, Kasha. I do. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Very nice. That's a really nice idea. Thank you for that. Someone else wants to share? No one? Yeah, yeah we, we do the virtual copies, but uh, like we, we don't have any like special topics or something. We mm -hmm. the topic kind of great, so. Great, that's also good. It's also work. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Nico? The most difficult part of the virtual coffee is to start talking about work. You know, we have somebody that says, like, oh, yeah, it has to chat them up, as you said, an organizer, right? Without an organizer who steps up to do this, like, you could just come into the meeting and just sit there and just put their and start talking about work. It happens. You need to train hard. Yeah. yeah, you lost fun, right? But, but, yes. <laughs> but is it a problem? Can you talk about work there? Uh, we talk about work all the time. Uh, but like we don't because we are out of the team. <laughs> like no, <laughs> like we have stand-ups and other meetings and stuff like that. That's not just happening. Uh, uh, specifically all the companies that doesn't make the sense. Yeah. Well, unless you're an introvert. 
someone else who would like to share, yeah? So uh, I'm from India, so in India people are very like, uh, they used to have tea, which is known as chai. So we have a one uh, event, which is known as chai kichacha, where like, it's similar like with uh, chicha cooking. Along with that, like on a monthly basis, we also like celebrate our teammates' birthday. We, like virtually, we send them cake, along with like some personalized uh, message and some gift vouchers. Great, thank you. Yes? And I can share a couple of things. Like mm -hmm. One of those is uh, we have, our company provides a budget for a team gathering. Uh, I think it works because my company is located within one country, different entire areas, but still. And we can do monthly meetups or quarterly meetups. Like a couple of days ago, we had a one day meetup where we rented a house. Mm -hmm. uh, and such kind of things. Uh, also, when it comes to this chatting and stuff, it kind of a spontaneous thing. But a thing that kind of works best for the team I've been, team to that I have been, is basically having some sort of uh, feedback sessions, like a direct feedback sessions where you kind of amputate like the, the anything except the direct feedback. Free. So in that way, you prevent people from kind of wondering what the other people think about that. Because a lot of insecurities comes from that. As colleagues said, like, you're afraid to fail and stuff. It's normal because you can always say to someone, okay, if you did this, maybe we can try or to help or whatever. So I believe that kind of that uh, encouraging direct feedback and regular feedback basically works more than anything. Because on that level, you're aiming straight to the point where people feel most comfortable. Thank you for sharing, that's a good idea. And now, do you have questions for me? Fernando? <laughs> All right, so I, I really like the part where you're saying that it's not mandatory. So how do you deal with people that are introvert, shy, and not comfortable in, for example, participating in um, some specific fun activities? How can you? include them in something and that make sure that they also feel part of the team. So far I haven't met with this case because even introverts, also you Fernando, at least yeah. arrived to virtual coffee. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you're a manager, scrum master or at least team member, you can kindly ask and let him maybe just connect, hide your camera, mute your microphone and just watch people and just feel the part of the team. You don't have to interact much, just as much as you are comfortable. Yeah, we had a sorry. <laughs> we jump in there and I just want to ask him because it's like he had a team member like this. He didn't want to join. And we said that's okay. And I asked him like, do, you don't want to join because you're afraid to talk in front of people and you don't want to participate. And he was like, yes, I just want to listen, but I don't want to participate. And then we did what exactly what Angie said. We just said, okay, you can be with your camera off and just in the listener's mode. And after three months, he started to participate and he turned his camera on. And Thank you for sharing, Robert. That's great. Yeah? Uh, I have a question. Uh, what to do with whole team? How to shape? Because uh, a few months ago, I tried to ask team whether you want some team building activity because uh, how to work team is situated in Czech Republic. Nobody uh, say nothing. Yeah. Um, w what to do in this case? How to mm, shake to make more energy to to team to meet not only for job yeah and, and social stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe just try directly to uh, send them some voting tool where you will select like, let's say dates in like two weeks and. Let's just really ask them to pick something. And I believe when they pick something and you will really schedule, I believe they would like to arrive. And when the company will pay for like dinner, I believe they will arrive. But I, th those are also difficult questions for me, so I can only guess what to do. But you can, of course, Here's my contact, but we know each other from work. 
you can write me anytime and let me know how it goes. And I will be really happy to help you. We'll see. Thank you as well. Some other questions? Yeah? It's not basically a question, but I think sometimes we need to consider that some people really don't like hanging around and having exactly. stuff like that. So we can become too pushy for them, and that will create a totally different side effect. So it's kind of like when you have someone who is like really, really huge introvert and down there, those people often have one person in the team they can they actually talk with and share some things approach that person to actually be like personal trust that can give you insight like this like uh, now I, I, I think you are trying too hard or maybe you should just leave him be and stuff like that and you would benefit more from doing that than pushing towards you know team gathering <coughs> thank you for sharing this really really great advice any other question yeah I have a question about offline activities because hours and right, when we meet we usually discuss work we have very thin time slot we can meet so do you have any offline activities and are they actually useful if we don't meet Offline activity note, maybe you can tr really try this asynchronous engagement and I also had a team and they had 12 hours of time difference and they were meeting on Thursdays and they also did on cameras Thursdays so everyone were supposed to or asked to turn cameras on and once per two weeks we did really short uh, fun activity however for US friends it was like 7 30 morning and for India part it was like six or something like that so try to even in this small sl um, slot uh, do like scribble IO for example. It scribble IO is like for 15 minutes really. It's quick. And when you set the timer for 10 seconds for guessing then you know. <laughs> I hope I helped you at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. Did you try maybe forming two teams to uh, mirror uh, time wise? Like uh, one thing that comes to my mind is uh, playing chess and uh, each draw have one draw per day and one group can meet and discuss it, which are nearer time zone wise, and the other also nearer time zone wise, and then something like that. I don't know, did you, did you try anything like that? Like, Not like, yet. like creating two, uh, two teams yeah, it can makes talk sense. to each other because we are nearer time zone wise. Yeah, it could work. I haven't tried. Or I haven't tried, but it's a nice idea. Yeah. But you can create an avatar in some game, mm -hmm. and you can play it in games. Thank you for sharing. Any other question or comment? I actually have questions, but maybe for for you, but for others. Like, if anyone has experience with this, uh, like I want, I don't want to call it virtual reality. It's about work, but uh, I mean, yeah, where you as teammates can meet in some in some virtual world or something and engage in, in like voice communication or something.
least it felt very like a woman. If you have never seen Gather Town, I'm not sure how safe it is to share your work out there. Mm. Uh, but it's an interesting platform. Thank you very much. Any other question or comment? If not, thank you very, very much for joining me today. This room has capacity of 90 seats and it's almost full. And it makes me just freaking happy and I will be in Dreamland for a month at least because of this experience. So thank you very much. You are a great in the audience and I hope I see you maybe other time maybe also with my talk. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the <laughs>